Now, here's a question. Is space becoming too crowded? That's the hot topic stirred up between astronomers and big telecoms companies who are in the process of launching constellations of satellites. SpaceX and OneWeb are at the forefront of the project to take high-speed broadband internet to every corner of the globe. Well, thousands of satellites will be sent into space in the next few years, but some international astronomers fear that the low Earth orbit could become polluted for space observation. Satellite technology is much less expensive than it used to be, but the spacecraft being built by OneWeb partner Airbus still has a price tag of about a million dollars. Telecoms companies are said to be working with the space scientists to minimise the potential impact of the satellites, but if several mega satellite constellations are launched, experts are worried about the potential for collision. A final thought, astronomers still argue that although it might be fascinating to see links of uh, satellites in the night sky, most people should really be looking at Saturn or the Moon. Well, let's talk about this for the next few minutes. I'm joined by Martin Barstow, Professor of Astrophysics and Space Science. He's in Leicester, and Ruth Pritchard-Kelly, a Vice President at OneWeb, is here in the studio. Thank you both of you for being here on the programme. A fascinating area of discussion, this. Uh, Martin, just explain to me uh, your concerns here. I think the, the concern is more to do with the fact that we haven't had an opportunity to think about the potential problem very deeply at the moment. The idea that there will be several thousand satellites and those tracks can pass across uh, very sensitive astronomical interests is what's caused the concern in the astronomical community. Uh, I think there are other things as well that are equally important. Also, the fact that these satellites are broadcasting in the radio frequency spectrum and radio astronomy could be impacted by that. And then there's the potential impact of uh, increasing the amount of space debris where if these satellites stop working and may, perhaps there might be collisions. Uh, and I think it's a new area and the fact that we haven't really looked at it very carefully is really the main issue for us right now. Well, a lot of questions rolled into that. Uh, let me bring Ruth into it. I I'll come into exactly what you're doing in a moment or two, but some of those concerns, just address that for us, first of all. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I'm, I'm delighted to say that OneWeb has been um, responsible from the beginning. Our design has taken into account um, other users of outer space, the radio astronomy community, um, uh, the spectrum community, um, and we're in an orbit where we know nobody else is already using it. Space is large. Um, collisions have been uh, uh, avoided uh, for decades uh, thanks to the sharing of, of information among the various communities um, and, and we feel confident um, that we're going to be able to provide this new service um, without um, um, mucking it up for others. There are so many satellites being put into space. We only recently had India joining the, the satellite uh, race and trying to gate crash that party. There's so much money to be made. Just take us through the cost benefit because uh, in terms of all all of those concerns we've been talking about, the root of this is to get broadband around the world, isn't it? Literally. OneWeb's goal is to bring broadband connectivity to everyone, everywhere, whether you're in a plane, uh, in a ship, in the Arctic, in rural Africa. Being remote will no longer mean being disconnected. There won't be a not spot anywhere in the world once these, this, this new kind of satellite system is launched. Traditional satellites, um, it's a terrible thing to, to do a telephone call on them, right? There's a long delay. The closer you are to the Earth, the less delay. It's as if you just had a traditional connection. Martin, you heard some of the justifications. I suppose the worry will be as more and more companies enter this arena. I know Ruth's company liaises with NASA and with others, but for, for, with there's so much money to be made, it can become a free-for-all. Uh, absolutely. I, I, actually, I do accept the benefits that Ruth has been describing, and I, I agree that OneWeb are certainly one of the more responsible companies. They're already talking to the astronomy community. And, and we've started to have the conversations that allow us to examine just what the scale of the problem might be. I think the bigger worry may be in less regulated areas of the market, uh, OneWeb and uh, Elon Musk launching Starlink through the US system. That's pretty carefully controlled by the regulators. Uh, and everybody's being very responsible about it, but not all countries. Uh, and, and is there regulation in space? That, that basic and question: who, who regulates the skies? Is there regulation that covers this area? 
Well, individual countries regulate the sky. So if you launch anything from the United States, you have to go through the federal authorities to get that approved and you have to go through some fairly rigorous justification of what you're doing. Uh, but other countries police this perhaps less effectively and there isn't really an international law. There's international guidance and an expectation uh, about the way that people should behave. But it's very hard to police that. Uh, Ruth, we were seeing a picture a little earlier of, of the Earth and just all of the low-level satellites around it. We know that's going to proliferate. What, what happens, uh, there it is on the screen, what happens to, to all the space junk when it's run its life? I mean, how, how do we protect ourselves from collisions, from all of the consequences of that? One Weber, absolutely proactive on this uh, as well as, as uh, every other responsible issue. So we've actually just announced that our satellites uh, were, will be designed with a grappling hook on the side so that if they die in outer space, that eventually the, the industry can go up and, and retrieve them. And uh, each, each piece of debris is tracked by the United States as well as many other countries. Um, nobody wants a collision. We lose money if there's a collision, right? So it's in our best interest to make sure that that does not happen. And nobody wants to interfere with the radio astronomers or other people that are using outer space. And in fact, that's what the International Telecommunications Union makes sure we share the spectrum um, and the various other international agencies. The UK Space Agency is incredibly active um, in sharing outer space. Martin, a final thought, and I had it in the introduction, which is that uh, I know that people like you think that perhaps we should always be looking at stars and planets, but perhaps people might like to see. I mean, it is an extraordinary sight seeing all of these satellites in, in low orbit, isn't it? Of course we should be looking at stars and planets. That's what the night sky is. It's fascinated us for centuries. And actually, I, I suspect that light pollution is going to be a bigger problem than the constellations of satellites. Uh, my personal view is that perhaps the reactions uh, from the community have been a little bit too strong, but there's still a lot of uncertainty in it. And it's perfectly OK for people to watch satellites. We often watch the, sp the space station going overhead. It's spectacular when you see it. So, so it's, this is not uh, uh, an either or situation. It is about working together and making sure that we can operate together uh, and that we don't inadvertently cause damage to other parts of the things that humans do. Yeah, and it's also an issue that's not going away. Uh, Martin Barstow and Ruth Pritchard-Kelly, thank you both for joining me on today's programme. Thanks so much.